Ladies and gentlemen, our keynote speaker, Dr. Michelle Kwan. so much and good afternoon. Chairman Altis, President Gross, trustees, faculty, parents, and members of the class of 2010. You're very kind to invite me to this 83rd commencement of Southern Vermont College. What a joyous occasion and what a lovely place. I thank you for letting me share in the moment. It's been a pleasure to meet my fellow honorees Ed Howard and Jim Wayne Scott, and I appreciate President Gross's very warm introduction. If you listen carefully to her description of my career, you might have noticed that I'm a, still a student myself with a year to go in a master's program, and I must be the only commencement speaker in the country that just handed in three term papers. <laughs> And now that I've got this honorary doctorate degree, I, I wonder how my professors will react if I insist that they call me Dr. Kwan. <laughs> but around this campus, let's keep it informal. You can just call me Michelle the Mountaineer Maniac. <laughs> Today marks the best kind of achievement. Hard earned, encouraged by others, celebrated in a moment, and lasting a lifetime. An awful lot of people go through life wishing that they got an education, but that's one regret that you'll never have. In all the days to come, never forget this one. Always treasure what you accomplished at this great college. I'm delighted to express what all your families and your friends are thinking right now. You set a high goal. You made it all the way. And we're proud of you. Congratulations. <laughs> You're each on a new path starting today. And I know the feeling because I'm on one myself. And it's a kind of a, a different experience for me because there's no ice on the road ahead. My competitive skating career is behind me, more or less, and I've settled into the routine of a, a student life. And mostly, I like the change of pace. Now and then, people stop and say hello. Sometimes they recognize me, and sometimes they think they recognize me. There was a time in a shopping mall, and this is a true story, in Newport Beach, this woman walking by did this double take. She was like, I know you. And I was kind of trying to, I don't know. She goes, hmm, you did my nails. <laughs> A true story. <laughs> as far back as I can remember, skating was basically everything to me. And for a while, I thought it would always be so. When I thought of the future, I never pictured grad school. But in fact, it would seem enough just to finish up my college degree, which I managed to do in a 10-year plan. So if you finished in five years, you beat me, hands down. <laughs> but when you have a career like figure skating, in which 28 is considered old, you better be flexible. And that's not just doing spirals. You better be flexible because sooner or later, and probably sooner, you have to adapt, change course, and give new things a try. Maybe some of you right at this moment feel that way. As you close one time in your life and you begin another, it's a safe bet that you and I will face more transitions up ahead. And graduation might be among the easier ones. So my attitude is prepare for the new, however unexpected. 
and don't linger in the old, however comfortable. Sometimes we just gotta move on, content with what we had and preparing for whatever may come. That frame of mind doesn't come naturally. Well, at least it didn't for me. You know, I'm the type who wants to know what is next and exactly what is expected of me. As a skater, my whole life was about planning, practicing, and competing, and nothing was left to chance. After a while, I found myself looking at almost everything that way. I remember thinking, by the time I'm 30 years old, I'll have everything under control. My past goals met, my future mapped out, and my life a picture of stability. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> well, I am 29 and birthday's right around the corner, so I'm thinking, hmm, why don't we make this? Why don't we make it 40? <laughs> I guess that's a common mistake, whether it's winning a competition, finishing a degree, getting the right job, paying off the loan, or finding the perfect partner. We always imagine that at some point, all the waiting and the worrying and striving will finally be over. We expect some sort of magic arrival when all the pieces settle permanently into place and life can finally begin. Ah, oh, isn't that great? <laughs> but I'm starting to realize, and maybe you are too, that things don't usually turn out that way. Just when we think we have it all figured out, everything right where we want it, there is always some new challenge to contend with. So even while we pursue our goals, we shouldn't put off enjoying life, thinking happiness waits for us in some far off destination. We should take life on its own terms and look for happiness in the here and the now. When I think of the men and women that I admire, one quality they share is the willingness to work and sacrifice for great and difficult things. Such people were all around me from an early age. Most of them figure skaters wanting the same thing that I wanted. And there's no stronger motivation than knowing that when you're not practicing, someone else is. As a competitor skater, you win some and you lose some. But on the good days and even on the bad ones, I found in skating what people discover in every hard endeavor whatever it might be, that the finest moments aren't necessarily when you finish first, but simply when you gave it your best, when you did it with heart and soul and held nothing back. In the words of the founder of the modern Olympics, the important thing in life is not the triumph, but the struggle. The essential thing is not to have conquered, but to have fought well. This is the Olympic spirit and it's good advice for all of life. Of course, in most pursuits, you can't look up on the scoreboard and know exactly where you stand. And so most of the times, in your lives and in your careers, you'll be the one scoring yourself. Let the standard always be high. In any field or calling, there will be moments when you're tempted to take the easy path, to settle something, to settle something short from best and call it, you know, that's good enough. We'll never give in to that attitude because that can only drag you down.